Thank you so much, uh, Chairman Murkowski. Uh, thank you for holding today's uh, hearing on legislation to boost America's energy supply. Uh, last month, Senators Manchin, Heidkamp, Hoven, Enzi, and I introduced S-1026, the North American Alternative Fuels Act. It's a bipartisan bill that would promote the production of alternative transportation fuels uh, here in North America and help reduce our nation's reliance on energy from overseas. Specifically, our bill would repeal a provision enacted in 2007. Uh, this provision prohibits the government from purchasing transportation fuels which emit more carbon than conventional petroleum fuel. While the authors of this provision were surely well-intentioned, they have left us with a policy that makes little sense. In effect, the policy compels the U.S. government, including the U.S. military, to favor energy produced in the Middle East and other hostile regions of the world over energy produced here in North America. So I think most Americans would find this absolutely absurd. That's why Senator Manchin and I are working to change this policy. We believe Congress should, at the very least, allow North American energy to compete on a level playing field with energy from overseas. We believe Congress should allow U.S. oil, gas, and coal producers to sell the fuel range of their products to the U.S. military. This will enable oil, gas, and coal producers to increase investments and jobs here in the United States. It will also allow the U.S. military to access additional energy resources here in North America, which will enhance our nation's energy security. Uh, Mr. Melito, would you explain how Sections 526 five tw of the uh, 2007 Energy Act favors energy from Middle East and other hostile regions of the world over energy produced in the United States? Yes, Senator. Fundamentally, Section 526 simply limits the flexibility of the military to purchase its fuels from reliable partners like Canada. And, and by doing that, you're taking those partners off the table and turning the demand to other parts of the world, including the Middle East. So fundamentally, it, it, it's extremely problematic. And, and could you explain how this Section 526, if it's not repealed, uh, could actually increase transportation fuel costs uh, for the military? Yes. Any, anytime you're limiting supply, of the fundamentals of economics um, are, are, are going to lead you to a position where um, you could increase uh, the costs of the fuels uh, to the purchaser, in this case, the military. Uh, you know, the military is the government's largest consumer of, of fuels, and uh, pro pro prohibiting the use of Canadian oil jeopardizes our national security and could increase those fuel costs for our military and restrict the Pentagon, it restricts the Pentagon's ability to get the reliable energy it needs, you know, to fight the war on terror. Um, I think the last thing we should be doing is limiting the ability of our military to get the necessary fuels for readiness, training, as well as operational needs. So it will also impact our ability to get reliable and secure sources of energy? Absolutely. And if you look at the recent uh, quadrennial ener energy review, there was a great focus in there about looking at energy from a North American standpoint and making sure that we're looking holistically at both Canada and Mexico and working together to, to really create that energy security we need. And 526 does the opposite. And that's why we need passage of 1026 so we can get over these hurdles and create the stability our military needs. You know, in your testimony, you also note that General Martin Dempsey, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, has acknowledged the geopolitical benefits of energy exports. Uh, could you tell us a little bit and discuss what those benefits might be? Yeah, uh, l last year uh, in March, uh, General Dempsey testified before uh, House Appropriations and, and was asked about U.S. production and U.S. exports. And he specifically stated that U.S. production, U.S. exports are a prominent tool as we move forward from a geopolitical standpoint. And we've seen that in the past four to five years where um, the, the, the key factor counterbalancing global supply disruptions has been our production. Our production has gone up over three million barrels a day. Global supply disruptions have been about three million barrels a day. So we've been able to counterbalance that. And we've gone beyond just counterbalancing by putting downward pressure on the price of oil as well as gasoline and creating huge benefits for consumers. So it's having a tremendous uh, benefit and it's impacting uh, the ability of regimes like uh, Iran, Russia, Venezuela to fund their own governments and militaries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chairman.